this is my view of my distinction of approximation and abstraction often you will find that people conflate the two people combine the two but i would like to make this distinction so uh, static analysis needs to create abstract values that represent many concrete values we already seen there is an abstract there is a concrete world and there is an abstract world and in concrete world we have sets of states and we do a abstraction function and compute one abstract value when we concretize it back it represents many concrete values so the whole game of static analysis is to map concrete values to abstract values that's the game of static analysis and there are two important considerations in this uh, when we play this game and therefore i would like to make a distinction between abstraction and approximation because they address different set of concerns abstraction deals with deciding which properties of the concrete values are essential so i'm trying to answer a question what is abstraction abstraction is something that decides which properties of the concrete values are essential so that we can forget all other properties uh abstraction is useful for the ease of understanding for the ease of reasoning for the e for the ease of accuracy of modeling you may have often seen that there are pictures in which human beings are shown using stick figures just drawn using sticks there are two sticks that show hands there is one stick that shows the body and there are two sticks that show uh legs and there is a circle this is an abstraction this abstraction is useful when we have to do things like counting the number of human beings this abstraction is not useful when we are talking about let's say the height of a human being or the weight of a human being so when we talk about counting the human beings height and weight are the properties that are not essential we can forego them we can still accurately model everything in that situation by abstracting a human picture using a stick figure however when height and weight are important uh representing a human being modeling a human being using a stick figure does not remain accurate it's not an abstraction if we still represent human beings using stick figure then we are doing approximation because we are now giving up on certain properties or certain values that are important in static analysis why do we go for abstraction so what is abstraction so abstraction in uh, in, uh, involves deciding which properties of the concrete values cannot be represented accurately and therefore should be summarized why do people use a, 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 a approximation people use approximation for decidability in order to convert a problem undecidable problem into a decidable problem in order to address the tractability issue the problem may be np hard or np complete and we still want a polynomial time algorithm so we are unable to accurately represent all properties so we will summarize certain properties or we may also want to do it for efficiency and scalability so that's my take on the distinction between approximation and abstraction just to revise further the focus of ab abstraction is on precision and conciseness of modeling abstraction tell us what we can ignore without being imprecise the focus of approximations is on efficiency and scalability approximations tell us the imprecisions that we must tolerate because there is no other way out in order to meet efficiency and scalability so it is in this sense that i would like to say that we should first build clean abstractions before surrendering to the approximations since we are dealing with undecidable problems we will have to bring in approximations anyway but should we start with the approximations and therefore get imprecise information 
or should we try to build clean abstractions before we start building abstraction approximations is the question if we were to build clean abstractions i call it the science view and if we do not worry about abstractions but start building something workable using approximations then i call it the engineering view of course this is a personal opinion and opinions could differ on this matter so coming back to point analysis ideally an analysis any static analysis should be sound precise and scalable uh by precise we mean it should be accurate it should give us the correct results there should be as few false positives as possible by scalable meaning it should be able to handle large programs so it should not require too much of a space so uh, so we are talking about scalability so when we talk about scalability we are talking about space efficiency rather than runtime efficiency so the common belief in the point analysis world is precision and scalability cannot be achieved together for exhaustive point analysis and we will define this uh, in the next slide the common practice is to trade off precision using approximation in order to gain scalability and the main factors enhancing the precision of an exhaustive analysis as against a demand driven analysis and we'll define it in the next slide these factors are flow sensitivity context sensitivity and field sensitivity and we'll look at all these factors uh, in a few minutes from now so an exhaustive analysis computes all possible information a demand driven analysis computes only the requested information and typically the request is made by a client analysis or a client optimization with some client who requires only this much of information so for example i might say give me the point t of p don't worry about the point t of q just tell me what is the point t of p and my job will be done when i next time need point t of some other pointer i can once again make a request when that request is being served i am making a demand when i am making a request i am making a demand and the analysis is driven by this demand this is different from incremental analysis which also computes only some information but it updates the earlier computed solution and although we will not be able to spend a lot of time on incremental analysis i would like to mention that i am i plan to start an interesting research direction on incremental data flow analysis in general so let's begin by looking at the three factors flow sensitivity uh context sensitivity and field sensitivity so we have this particular control flow graph these f0 f1 f2 are the flow functions of the corresponding nodes and when we perform flow sensitive analysis we know that we apply f0 to the boundary information we compute some information out the, at the out of it and then that information is fed to the in of this and f1 is applied to that information so flow sensitive analysis maintains an order of function applications we have seen that theoretically we would like to compose these functions and define something called meet over paths that tells us the effect of the boundary information at a given program point by incorporating the effect of all statements along all paths from the start to that particular program in a flow insensitive analysis we disregard the control flow we do not worry about whether f1 has to be applied after f0 or whether f0 is has to be applied after f1 so we can model it by a control flow graph like this there is no sequence we just start from here we apply f0 we end and we keep applying functions as long as we want so the assumption in a flow insensitive analysis is that statements can be executed in any order for example i may start from here i may execute f2 i may come here then i go back i come here and after f2 then i execute f1 and i go here and then i randomly execute f3 and then i reach end and then i once again go back here and i once again apply f0 
so this is the modeling so essentially the control flow order of execution of statements does not matter that is flow insensitive analysis for us flow insensitive analysis is less precise than a flow sensitive analysis so here is an example so let's say we have this program x is equal to and a and we are saying y is equal to x and then we are redefining the pointer x and we say that x now holds the address of b a flow insensitive points to information will say x points to a x points to b and y points to a and y points to b note that there is no chance of y actually pointing to b because in the program the assignment x is equal to and b happens after the assignment y is equal to x a flow insensitive points to information will tell us that at this program point we have x points to b and y points to a a flow in this is flow sensitive points to information flow insensitive points to information is same at all program points there is no distinction between different program points so the advantage of flow insensitive points to information is we have to maintain a single piece of information that is an over approximation valid over approximation for all program points so we computing presumably a smaller amount of information a uh, flow insensitive flow sensitive analysis on the other hand will have to maintain different pieces of information at each program point what is context sensitivity so context sensitive analysis performs analysis of a procedure in the context of the call that has been made to it so here we have procedure r which is called from procedure s and is called from procedure t our convention is that we have a start s denoting the start of procedure s we have a node end s denoting the end of procedure s so we have start r and we have end r we have start t and we have nt similarly a call statement is divided into a call and a return a call says what happens during parameter passing a return says what happens when the return value is mapped back to the thing in the caller and of course in interprocedural analysis we will assume that all variables are true so here we are showing this a is equal to and b so there are two calls to procedure r so here we compute in s a points to b and that a points to b reaches r and then we apply the flow function fr to it similarly when we have call from t the c points to d information reaches here let's assume that this fr doesn't change the points to information in any way in that case if we consider this particular path it's easy to see that such a path is interprocedurally invalid if a call to procedure r has been made from s then r must return to s i am of course assuming that we are talking about sequential programs so if we were to follow this particular path then we might end up propagating a points to b in t which is spurious we should not propagate a points to b we should not traverse this particular path so that's the disadvantage of representing procedure calls using a graph statically this graph when we are here it doesn't tell us whether we came from s or whether we came from t unless we do something special and that special is context sensitivity context sensitivity tells us whether this call to r was made from s or it was made from t and we will spend a whole lot of time on context sensitivity in module 4 of the analysis so the way a points to b should not be propagated here propagating c points to d here is also spurious note that it is sound it is not unsound we are simply giving more information than required so we have covered all the traces and we have spurious traces our concretization is giving us 
more information than actually exists at front time. So long as you're not missing anything, things are sound. The result is sound. A context sensitive analysis should give me this result. So although within the body of R, we have both these points to pairs, A points to B and C points to D. At the end of the R, A points to B should be propagated back to S and C points to B, D should be propagated to R. That is context sensitivity. It's easy to see that context insensitive analysis is less precise than a context sensitive analysis. This is the result that we would get in a context sensitive analysis. In a context insensitive analysis, we are unable to make distinction between contexts. So we will say both the pairs, A points to B and C points to D, both these pairs reach both the colors S and T. We come to the last point, field sensitivity versus field insensitivity. Let's consider this assignment, we're talking about field, so we have a pointer to some structure variable and we are changing its address f. So we have this x and its field f points to some y, some object y. Similarly, we have x. After this, we do an assignment to the g field of x and we store z. Note that f and g are different fields. Later in the third assignment, we say w is equal to x arrow f. So when we say w is equal to x arrow f, w should point to y, which means that we are actually making a distinction between the field f and g. A field insensitive analysis will not make a distinction between f and g. It will treat each field as same and it will treat, so the field distinction does not matter. We simply use star. So x holds the address of y, any field of x holds the address of y and any field of x can also hold the address of z and therefore when we say w is equal to x arrow f, we don't know whether we are talking about this or this, so we conservatively say W points to both Y and Z. It's easy to see that field insensitive analysis is more imprecise than field sensitive analysis. So here is an engineer's landscape. Point analysis is a fertile ground for research because the factors that enhance the precision of points to analysis, which is flow, context, and field sensitivity, all these factors actually hamper scalability. They require more information to be computed, they require more information to be stored. So if you want to seek precision, it appears that you can't have a scalable analysis. So here we are showing just the flow sensitivity and context sensitivity and there are many variants. We are not going to go into the details of all these. But there is something called flow insensitive analysis using equality, then there is a flow insensitive analysis using inclusion, then there is flow insensitive analysis using SSA, then there is flow sensitive analysis without kill and there is full flow sensitive analysis. On this axis of context sensitivity, the context sensitivity increases, so this is context insensitive analysis, this is a uh, uh, context sensitive analysis using object sensitivity. This is context sensitive analysis but insensitive in recursion and this is full context sensitive analysis. As if these variations are not sufficient, there are variations based on the kind of data structures used for computing points to analysis. There are BDDs, binary decision diagrams that try to represent points to information concisely and therefore presumably you can scale points to analysis. Uh, there are probabilistic data structures which say that x points to y with a probability of 0.9. We are not saying for sure that x actually points to y. Then there are methods such as parallel methods. So I may use GPUs or I may use a parallel processor to perform points to analysis. There are demand driven methods. There are randomized methods. There are various kinds of refinements. We can do refinements level wise. We can first perform analysis of top level pointers and then we perform analysis of 
uh, the second level pointers and so on or the bootstrapping where we perform first flow insensitive analysis or context in for any insensitive analysis use that information and then try to increase the sensitivity so as you can see lots of things have been tried in this world of pointer analysis so this is a very very crowded area what is thinly populated is this corner where we are talking about flow sensitive and context sensitive analysis and that's the corner that we are trying to occupy i have been working on it for about a dozen years or so since 2008 and lots of interesting problems have been solved by my PhD students but still there are more interesting problems to be solved and we are not there yet as far as the scalability is concerned uh, i had set up a goal for myself of being able to do flow and context sensitive analysis of a million lines of c code i set up this goal in 2008 and we have still not reached there so far we have been able to reach about 158k we still have to reach 1000k lines and i am hoping that in another 5 or 6 years we might be able to reach there uh the next topic compares points to an alias information and we will look at in a short part of the lecture next lecture